Hello there and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Now, a few weeks ago in my video, How to Get Rid of Slugs, Snails and Earwigs, I showed you the results of an experiment on two small hydrangea plants. This was copper versus no copper. On the first hydrangea plant, I put a protective copper band around. And on the second, nothing at all. And I think the results spoke for themselves. This is the result of a copper band, as you can see here, if you remember, there's a copper band all the way around it. And this plant survived, although planted late and it was very, very small. It survived and not only survived, but it thrived. So looking very healthy, still looking very healthy, still got no slug damage whatsoever. If you remember, I have just taken any lower leaves that might be touching the ground that would enable the creepy crawlies or slugs and snails to climb and get over this barrier. So once you keep that little gap, it seems to work. Everything else is looking perfect. And now we're going to go back and have a look at the result of the second plant. This is all that's left of plant number two. As you can see, just a few sticks poking out of the ground, all of them completely dry and completely dead. So in this first experiment of copper versus no copper, definitely copper one hands down. Now, in that video, which I'm going to link to in the description below, we were talking about all different types of solutions, both conventional and non-conventional, chemical, non-chemical, organic, etc. In that video, we set a second experiment into play, and this is going to be slug bait versus copper band. Now, I had planted two small caladiums really, really, really late in the season. In fact, so late in the season, that I didn't even think they were going to break ground. They actually did to my surprise, and they are very, very small, but they're there. But within 24 hours of breaking the surface, along came those wee bisties, and they started attacking them. So a great opportunity to put this experiment into play. On one of the plants, I put iron phosphate pellets around and then repeated that. And on the second plant, I put a copper band around. Now, as you can see, I've got quite a hefty jacket on because it's very, very cold today. And indeed the forecast for the next few weeks is not particularly brilliant. They are caladiums and they're going to have to be lifted probably within the next few days to be dried and then stored over the winter. So it's like now or never. So even though the plant is small, you're going to get a good idea of the results. So let's go down the garden and have a look. This is plant number one. Now, overall, it's quite a weak looking plant. This leaf has been lying on the ground and I think the damage is more cold and wet than anything else. This leaf here does have holes in it and has like bites out of the side of it. So it definitely has been attacked. Uh, there aren't a lot of new leaves, so I'm not sure if the leaves are getting attacked as soon as they break the surface of the ground. Certainly, this is the only new growth I can see. So the plant is definitely alive, but it's definitely not thriving. This is plant number two. As you can see, the copper band is still intact around it. And in general, this plant is looking a lot healthier than the other one. It's got lots and lots of leaves. From what I can see, I can't see any holes at all or any side attacks. Oh, look, there's a side attack there. And you know, know why? Because that one has been touching the ground, which is what I'm always saying. If you don't limb up, you're going to get an attack. So that's something to keep in mind. But in general, this is looking very, very good and very, very healthy. So again, for me, if it's copper versus slug bait, copper's going to win. I can't say the slug bait is a fail because it's not. The plant is still there. It's still alive. Not particularly healthy, but it definitely is still alive. And definitely the slug bait has not eliminated attacks, but it certainly has reduced them. So there you've seen the results of the experiment with your own eyes, or at least through the eyes of my camera. And it's often better to see it with your own eyes, especially when you're reading so much information online and through the internet and especially if it's so conflicting as it is. With copper I think you need to keep two things in mind. First of all remember to limb up and secondly the band must be wide enough so that the slug or snail isn't capable of passing from one side to the other without putting its whole body on it. I think that's the secret of it. If you use one that's too narrow they sort of like hop across it or the little electrical discharge is not uncomfortable enough to make it want to retreat. Certainly for me who's against chemicals, except in the most extreme cases, it's a real bonus for me to know that this works because no chemicals involved, totally ecological, it doesn't, it doesn't kill the slugs, doesn't hurt them, it just makes it a little bit uncomfortable. It makes them want to go somewhere else, which is somewhere else except my plant, which is great. And it doesn't affect any other critters in the garden. So it's wildlife safe. So that's my five ounces of wisdom for you. <laughs> As for me, I'll see you next Friday right here in Granny's garden. Bye for now.